O Lord, open thou our lips. And our mouth shall show forth thy praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Praise ye the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. The psalm of the day is Psalm 37, part 2, beginning on page 376. The Lord ordereth a good man's going, and hath pleasure in his way. Though he fall, he shall not be cast away, for the Lord upholdeth him with his hand. I have been young and now am old, and yet saw I never the righteous forsaken, nor his children begging their bread. The righteous is ever merciful and lendeth, and his children are blessed. Flee from evil and do the thing that is good and dwell forevermore. For the Lord loveth the thing that is right, and he forsaketh not his any godly. The unrighteous shall be destroyed forever. As for the seed of the ungodly, it shall be rooted out. The righteous shall inherit the land, and dwell therein forever. The mouth of the righteous is exercised in wisdom, and his tongue will be talking of judgment. The law of his God is in his heart and his goings shall not slide. The ungodly washeth the righteous, and seeketh occasion to slay him. The Lord will not leave him in his hand, nor condemn him when he is judged. Hope thou in the Lord, and keep his way, and he shall promote thee that thou shalt possess the land. When the ungodly shall perish, thou shalt see it. I myself have seen the ungodly in great power, and flourishing like a green bay tree. I went by, and lo, he was gone. I sought him, but his place could nowhere be found. Keep innocency, and take heed unto the thing that is right, for that shall bring a man peace at the last. As for the transgressors, they shall perish together, and the end of the ungodly is they shall be rooted out. But salvation of the righteous cometh of the Lord who is also their refuge in the time of trouble. And the Lord shall stand by them and save them. He shall deliver them from the ungodly and shall save them, because they put their trust in him. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The first lesson is written in the second book of the prophet Samuel, the seventh chapter, beginning at the first verse. After the king was settled in his palace, and the Lord had given him rest from all his enemies around him, he said to Nathan the prophet, Here I am, living in a house of cedar, while the ark of God remains in a tent. Nathan replied to the king, Whatever you have in mind, go ahead and do it, for the Lord is with you. But that night the word of the Lord came to Nathan, saying, Go and tell my servant David, this is what the Lord says. Are you the one to build me a house to dwell in? I have not dwelt in a house from the day I brought the Israelites up out of Egypt to this day. I have been moving from place to place with a tent as my dwelling. Wherever I have moved with all the Israelites, did I ever say to any of their rulers whom I commanded to shepherd my people Israel, Why have you not built me a house of cedar? Now then, tell my servant David, This is what the Lord Almighty says. I took you from the pasture, from tending the flock, and appointed you ruler over my people Israel. I have been with you wherever you have gone, and I have cut off all your enemies from before you. Now I will make your name great, like the names of the greatest men on earth. And I will provide a place for my people Israel, and will plant them so that they can have a home of their own and no longer be disturbed. Wicked people will not oppress them any more as they did at the beginning, and have done ever since the time I appointed leaders over my people Israel. I will also give you rest from all your enemies. The Lord declares to you that the Lord himself will establish a house for you, when your days are over and you rest with your ancestors, I will raise up your offspring to succeed you, your own flesh and blood, and I will establish his kingdom. He is the one who will build a house for my name, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. 
I will be his father, and he will be my son. When he does wrong, I will punish him with a rod wielded by men, with floggings inflicted by human hands. But my love will never be taken away from him, as I took it away from Saul, whom I removed from before you. Your house and your kingdom will endure forever before me. Your throne will be established forever. Nathan reported to David all the words of this entire revelation. Here endeth the first lesson. David has defeated the Philistines and is at peace. Yet the thought comes to him that he lives in a palace, while the covenant box, that is, the ark, the sign of God's presence with his people, is kept in a tent. David consults with Nathan the prophet, who tells him that not he, but one of his sons will build God's temple. Nevertheless, in Nathan's divine message, the Jewish messianic hope is, for the first time, tied to the line and dynasty of King David, of whose seed eventually the Christ child, Jesus, was born at Bethlehem. My soul doth magnify the Lord, and, and my spirit, spirit hath rejoiced in God my Savior, for he hath regarded the lowliness of his handmaiden. For behold, from henceforth all generations shall call me blessed, for he that is mighty hath magnified me, and holy is his name, and his mercy is on them that fear him throughout all generations. He hath showed strength with his arm. He hath scattered the proud in the imagination of their hearts. He hath put down the mighty from their seat, and hath exalted the humble and meek. He hath filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he hath sent empty away. He, remembering his mercy, hath opened his servant Israel, as he promised to our forefathers, Abraham and his seed forever. Glory be to the Father and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The second lesson is written in the book of the Acts of the Apostles, the eighth chapter, beginning at the fourth verse. Those who had been scattered preached the word wherever they went. Philip went down to a city in Samaria and proclaimed the Messiah there. When the crowds heard Philip and saw the signs he performed, they all paid close attention to what he said. For with shrieks, impure spirits came out of many, and many who were paralyzed or lame were healed. So there was great joy in the city. Now for some time a man named Simon had practiced sorcery in the city and amazed all the people of Samaria. He boasted that he was someone great, and all the people, both high and low, gave him their attention and exclaimed, This man is rightly called the great power of God. They followed him because he had amazed them for a long time with his sorcery. But when they believed Philip as he proclaimed the good news of the kingdom of God in the name of Jesus Christ, they were baptized, both men and women. Simon himself believed and was baptized, and he followed Philip everywhere, astonished by the great signs and miracles he saw. When the apostles in Jerusalem heard that Samaria had accepted the word of God, they sent Peter and John to Samaria. When they arrived, they prayed for the new believers there that they might receive the Holy Spirit, because the Holy Spirit had not yet come on any of them. They had simply been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then Peter and John placed their hands on them, and they received the Holy Spirit. Here endeth the second lesson. In this lesson, we read of the mission of St. Philip, one of the seven deacons whose ordination we read about last week. Here, the first step is taken towards a wider conception of the Church, as the Gospel is extended to a Samaritan, that is, a person much hated by the Jews. St. Philip's ministry in Samaria is received with great joy, and when the Church in Jerusalem hears about the Samarian converts, the two apostles, Saints Peter and John, travel there to lay hands on them with prayer the first mention of the rite of confirmation in the New Testament. Lord, now let us thou thy servant depart in peace, according to thy word. For mine eyes have seen thy salvation, which thou hast prepared before the face of all people, to be a light to light in the Gentiles, and to be the glory of thy people Israel. Glory be to the Father and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, 
as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. O Lord, show thy mercy upon us, and grant us thy salvation. O Lord, save the Queen, and mercifully hear us when we call upon thee. Endue thy ministers with righteousness, and make thy chosen people joyful. O Lord, save thy people, and bless thine inheritance. Give peace in our time, O Lord, and evermore mightily defend us. O God, may clean our hearts within us, and take not thy Holy Spirit from us. Lord of all power and might, who art the author and giver of all good things, Graft in our hearts the love of thy name, increase in us true religion, nourish us with all goodness, and of thy great mercy keep us in the same. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O God, from whom all holy desires, all good counsels, and all just works do proceed, give unto thy servants that peace which the world cannot give, that our hearts may be set to obey thy commandments and also that by thee we, being defended from the fear of our enemies, may pass our time in rest and quietness. Through the merits of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Lights in our darkness, we beseech thee, O Lord, and by thy great mercy defend us from all perils and dangers of this night. For the love of thy only Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. O Lord, hear our prayer. And let our cry come unto thee. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the souls of the faithful departed, through the mercy of God, rest in peace. Amen.